LBC Money Hour. With Scottish Widows, 200 years of helping people plan for the future. LBC, I'm Clive Bull. We're talking about pensions at the moment. If you have a question, do call 0345 6060 973. Charlie Redding uh, is answering those questions, retirement expert and uh, financial planner. And let's take another question. It's Gus in Finchley. Gus, good evening to you. Uh, hi there, how are you doing? All right, what can we do for you? Yeah, what it is, is um, I'm 53 years old. I haven't actually made any provision for pension all my life, but I do have um, a lump sum uh, at this point in my life to uh, possibly invest in a pension or an alternative. What do you suggest for people that, who are in my situation with roughly about 14 years left of active work left available to me? Hi, Gus. Um, thank you for the question. Can I just ask, are you employed or self-employed? Um, self-employed. Self-employed. OK. Um, OK, so firstly, um, great question, uh, because it's never too late to start saving into pensions. You know, It's a qu question I quite often get asked, and it genuinely is never too late. Even if you were going to retire next year, uh, it's worth putting money into pensions. So what you've got with this lump sum is the opportunity to put in uh, as much. Uh, have you ever had a pension? Have you got any small no. pensions lying around? No, never had anything. No, no. no. Self-employed, okay. um, work-based stuff. And I just never got around to it. I invested it in property and other things, but I never. I thought pensions back in the eighties, it was seemed a bit, a bit sort of cowboyish with greatest of respect because some of Eagle, Eagle Star and whatever closed up, and you never got your money, and you just went into nowhere. But that's another story. Yeah. OK, well, no, it was just, it's just it's a question I ask only because it impacts how much money you can put in mm. But without having any previous pension uh, arrangement. Then what you could do is you could put in up to uh, the um, you could either put in 40,000 pounds as a lump sum or if your earnings are less than that and that would be your taxable earnings, uh, then it would be amount an amount equal to your taxable earnings. So let's say your earnings were £30,000 last year. You could put in £30,000 before uh, April um, next year. And then after April next year, you could do another one and another amount that's equal to your earnings. Now, as you're self-employed, it's quite difficult to know what your earnings are going to be, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I would imagine. So therefore, what you can do is you can put in what you think is going to be your earnings. Uh, and if you've put in too much money, uh, at the end of the tax year, uh, there's some provision put in place just specifically for self-employed people so you can get that excess back. And the reason you don't want to put more than your earnings in is because you won't get tax relief on those uh, on any contribution that's over your earnings. But the fantastic thing of doing about doing that lump sum is that if you if you let's say we're earning um, thirty thousand pounds and you put in a thirty thousand pound lump sum, then you will pay zero income tax that year. So for every year you can put in, and even if let's say you you know your earnings were fifty thousand and your um, pension contribution was forty thousand because that's the the, the cap, uh, you would then only pay income tax on ten thousand pounds, but that would be below your allowance. So therefore you'd still pay no income tax. So it's a brilliant brilliant way of eliminating your income tax for a period of time, whether it's a, a year or even longer, um, by putting in a lump sum. But as I say. It's going to be the lower amount of either your annualized earnings, taxable earnings, uh, or forty thousand pounds, and you can do that each year until the lump sum is all used up. Okay, Gus. Does that make sense? It does make sense. It sounds like a great idea, and a, a great way to save on tax as well. Um, what I was going to say: if once the lump sum has run out and you contribute uh, on a, on a month to month basis for that pension, what would be the, the amount you would suggest? Uh, to get something reasonable, as you did say, two thirds of your <clears throat> salary should be the sort of sufficient amount in retirement. But what amount would be necessary for me to continue once the lump sum has, you know, basically I pull my money into the pension for my long term future? Okay, so so I, I said on with the last caller that you can use half your age as a percentage of your earnings as a, as a very rough calculation. That's going to be more difficult for you because you're obviously starting this pension with a lump sum. So therefore, yeah. it is it's more difficult. So what I would suggest is you, there's a number of online tools that you can use, but we actually have one on our, on our website. So our website is efficientportfolio.co.uk. 
And it, under the tools section, there's a, a thing called the two minute retirement plan. And if you go into the two minute retirement plan, you can go through and ask answer about I can't remember how many questions it is around 15 questions. And what it will then do is it will start to give you a calculation as to whether you're on track to retire. Now, you're going to have to play around with it a little bit and you can put in different figures that you say, well, OK, I can afford this on a month by month basis. And it will tell you whether you, that will uh, lead you leave you with enough money to live through to age 100, because we try and make sure that everybody's got enough money to live to age 100. Uh, because otherwise you end up with too much life at the end of your money, which is a slightly awkward place to be. Um, but the two minute retirement plan will just help you try and do those, some of those calculations because it's not quite so straightforward as just a half your age as a percentage of percentage of your earnings. Uh, but that way you can try and, 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 you know, it might be that you need to build that money up gradually. You know, maybe you can afford to put, um, X amount in this year, but next year you can put afford to put a little bit more in. Uh, uh, but it, it really is a, the most tax efficient way to save for you being able to stop working at, at some point in the future. OK, good luck, Gus. Thank you very much for that. Let's take another question. Iva and uh, it's Lorraine. Hello, Lorraine. Hello. Hello. What can Hi, we do Lorraine. Hi. Um, right. I have a company pension. that I took a lump sum and started drawing um, my pension at age 54. After 10 years, um, I had notification that I'd taken 5% of my total pension pot. Now, will my pension pot, um, uh, my payments be increased when I actually reach um, state pension age? Or will I have to live to be 160 to receive all my pension pot? <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, can you tell me what type of company you what, what company you were working for and uh, do you know anything about what do you the mean scheme? well um, what, what what company was it it's an airline it's an airline okay um yeah. and was it a final salary pension scheme um that i'm not sure um it's, possibly it doesn't i don't think it sounds like one but it, it's okay um, the, pro the problem is there are, are different types of schemes out there and okay. the, the way you're describing the scheme is is slightly confusing. So I'm not quite sure which type of scheme you've got. And without knowing the type of scheme that you've got, it's very difficult to say how it's going to work. Um, okay. I, I would, if they're telling you that you've had 5% out already, it sounds to me like you're, um, you're in drawdown, but that's not, the, that would not be, a typical company scheme so i'm slightly confused as to, to why they're giving you that those figures but i think the, the problem is um company schemes all work uh, particularly final salary schemes but company schemes can all work very differently it, it comes down to the, the the um the scheme rules and so therefore really the best thing you can do is um seek advice from somebody like a financial planner because what they'll need to do is they'll need to write to that scheme and fight or, or look at your specific paperwork and help you understand what you've got from that scheme and what your options are because different schemes increase at different rates and and so it's it's very difficult to know without being able to dive into the detail but i would suggest if you get advice um uh, on that scheme then they will be able to, somebody you know, with the experience of a financial planner can then try and understand um, what the implications are of your scheme and give you advice on it. All right. Right. Apologies, okay. I can't be more specific. Okay. Thank you very well, much, thank Lorraine. You, <laughs> thank you very much for that. Uh, here's a quick text here from uh, Barry in Epsom. He says, if I take lump sums each year from my pension funds, but I make sure that my total income is under the income tax threshold, would I have to pay any tax? No, you wouldn't. And that's one of the brilliant ways of, of managing a pension flexibly nowadays is, is I mean, we have clients that are you know, very successful and we're drawing income from them from different sources, but we can uh, engineer it so they're paying little or no income tax. So yes, if you take out a, a lump of money less than the uh, personal allowance, as long as you don't have earnings from anywhere else, you'll pay no tax so in theory as I, as I tried to point out to um uh, the lady that called but on behalf of her dad at, at the start actually by doing that you could take the entire pension fund out tax-free as opposed to you take it all in one lump sum you're then you're handing over 40 percent to the taxman 
OK, good, good news. Uh, we'll take some more questions on pensions in a moment. This is the Money Hour on LBC. It's 8.30. Let's get the news headlines now with Zora Suleiman. The Health Secretary has said an investigation is taking place into working practices at some clothing and food factories in Leicester after a spike in coronavirus cases there. The city is under a local lockdown with pubs and restaurants still unable to reopen. A woman has died after being stabbed in southeast London. Officers were called to the Holiday Inn in Greenwich this morning. A man believed to have been known to the victim is in hospital after falling from the building. And a Siberian tiger has killed a zookeeper in Switzerland. Zoo Zurich says the 55-year-old woman was attacked whilst in the animal's enclosure. LBC weather showers heavy across northern, central and western parts of the UK, mostly dry and clear elsewhere, a low of 7 degrees. This is LBC. It's been a tough time for small businesses over the last few months, so many have been using digital tools to adapt during the lockdown. We spoke to some of them. My name's Samuel Mensah and I run Uncle John's Bakery in Tottenham. When I had to temporarily close my bakery during the lockdown, I updated my Google My Business listing so people could find me on Google Maps or search to see that I was now selling online for home delivery. People love and enjoy our famous Ghanaian sweetbread. And since the lockdown, we've been busy delivering those and all our baked goods. To find out how Google can help your business adapt, visit g.co slash smallbusiness. Now then. Big Mac or Chicken McNuggets? Did you know you can order ahead, contact free, by downloading the My McDonald's app? Simply select some of your favourites from our reduced menu and we'll start preparing them when you're nearby. Nice. <whistles> from 11am to 10pm, participating restaurants only, app T's and C's apply. Should your kids go back to school? Ask Andrea. She's a teacher. We're doing everything we can to keep the children safe and happy at school which is why it's great that more of those who can are coming back, not only for their education, but for their overall well-being too. It gives them a routine, helps develop their social skills, and they get to see their friends too. If your child is eligible, they should return to school. The government is working towards getting all pupils back in September. Stay alert. Control the virus. Save lives. Eurotunnel Le Shuttle is a safer way to get to France and beyond with social distancing built in. There's no scrum at security, hanging around for your bags or shouldering strangers in your seat. With Eurotunnel or the shuttle, simply drive on at Folkestone and stay in your car comfortably. Then drive off 35 minutes later. Stay safe. Go Tunnel, Eurotunnel, Le Shuttle, a safer way to France and beyond. LBC Money Hour. With Scottish Widows. Taking on your future together. LBC, The Money Hour, I'm Clive Bull, and we're taking your questions on pensions this week. Charlie Redding is here with us at the moment, a retirement expert financial planner from Efficient Portfolio. And let's talk to Sandra in East Dulwich. Hello, Sandra. Hi, I'm here. Um, yeah, I just want to know, I've um, got a very small uh, private pension, personal pension, of about £55,000 um, with Scottish Widows, in fact. I was self-employed. Um, I'm 74, and I'm not, I haven't taken my pension yet. Um, and I think now you don't have to take it at 75, which will be next year. What I really want to know is, um, when I come to take it, is there any advantage between drawdown or an annuity? I because I've been self-employed, I've never had a regular um, salary coming in. And so getting the state pension, which I also put off for some time before I took it, um, it's wonderful to have a, a, a proper amount coming in each month. Um, a while back, you could add to the state pension. There was a, a two, three years ago that you could add money into it, which I did because I had some savings. Um, so I'm getting... 1,000 something rather a month from my state pension and I don't have many outgoings really so I haven't taken my pension with Scottish Widows but when I come to do it I'm sort of tempted with an annuity because it will be the same amount until I die um, but drawdown is sort of interesting so can you give me any thoughts mm. about that? that? That's a really interesting question uh, what do you think Charlie? Yeah, so um, can I just ask, have you got children? 
No. Oh, yes, I have. But she's a grand and a grandchild, and she's working. Okay. Yes, okay. I do. Well, in terms of the pros and cons of, of of the annuity versus drawdown, the annuity yeah. is going to give give you a guaranteed income until the day you die. Yes. Uh, and you can build in certain guarantees to that. Uh, in terms of if you die early, you can kind of have a minimum of five years paid out, or or, or a spouse's pension, or those sorts of things. Um, you can do. Can you just say that again? If you die early, if you, if you died early, then you can build in. You can pay essentially for by accepting a slightly lower income for a minimum of five years income to be paid out. So there are certain ways that you can you can use an annuity. Uh, and I, I take it you don't you're not suffering from ill health, are you? Um, well, that's actually why I stopped work. It's it's chronic vestibular migraine. Um, but I've also had atrial fibrillation. I'm slightly asthmatic. I don't know if those things count on any of the things to push your pension they might. Not sure. So mm. so so they, they might. And you may. I, I suspect from what you've just said, you may not qualify but you may qualify for what's called an enhanced annuity which would mean that that income was a bit higher so right. that is yeah. that is the benefit of having an annuity is that it's guaranteed for the rest of your life yeah. the downside of an annuity is that they are based on interest rates and as you all know interest rates are at an all-time low at the moment and so therefore mm. the amount of income you're likely to get from an annuity is pretty low in fact it, it's 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 very low dependent subject to you having uh, qualifying for an enhanced annuity. So the yeah. alternative is using drawdown, which is where you leave your money invested and you draw out the income as quickly or as slowly as you want. The only advantage yeah. of that is, of course, that you could take a bit more money in these next few years while you're kind of uh, fit and healthy enough to be out in enjoying your retirement. And then as you um, get a bit older, you may say, well, I actually need a bit less income, so I, I'll, I'll reduce it. And, and then you may decide, you know, you may need more income at the end of retirement if you end up in a care home or something like that. So it gives you much more flexibility. It also means that when you die, whatever's left in that pension will pass on to your uh, spouse or your children uh, and, and actually free of inheritance tax, albeit they might, depending on your age at the time, you might they might have to pay some income tax on it. But it's a very tax efficient way of passing some money on to the, the children. The downside, of course, is if you spend the money too quickly or the investment performance is, is very poor, then you may run out of money as opposed to um, uh, with the annuity where that will never happen. But you'll probably have the scope to take a much better income from drawdown. Uh, it's just that risk of it, of it not being there if the performance is very poor. Um, but with the ability to potentially also leave money to the next generation now if that was your only pension scheme i'd be saying you want to you know, you should really be thinking about the annuity very seriously but because you've already told me you've actually got a very good stable income from the state pension and you don't have really high spending the drawdown actually might suit you better because it will just give you that little bit of flexibility to say well look i, I can draw a bit more out uh, and if I don't need it, I can leave it to the children. But knowing that if the worst happened and you did spend it all too quickly and it ran out of money when you were in your kind of 90s, well, you've still got your state pension to rely on and you're not going to be um, destitute. So it sounds to me like drawdown might be better, but you, the best person to speak to, again, sorry to keep reiterating this, is, a, is to go and see a financial planner because they'll be able to look at the whole situation and assess which is better for you. But drawdown sounds to me like it's it's certainly worth considering in, in your situation. All right. Thank you very much for that question. Can I ask you just a bit about uh, the state pension as well, uh, Charlie? We've had quite a few uh, questions coming in on that and a, a couple of things, really. People want to know how do they find out uh, when they are due for their state pension and also how much are they going to get uh, as a starting point? Um, how do you get that information? Uh, it's, a, it's a great question, a question that we get asked a lot uh, because it's horribly complicated is the, the reason. Uh, and the easiest way to do it, though, the answer is actually really easy. Uh, and that is just to go to the government website, uh, um, .gov.uk. Uh, it's actually, if you put it into Google, um, pension, uh, what, you know, what's my pension age, the, the first page to come up will be will be this. It is uh, .gov.uk forward slash state dash pension dash age. But as I say, if you just type it into Google, then it'll take you pretty much straight there. 
and the and that will you put in your put in your um, gender your uh, date of birth and it will tell you what your state pension age is and then if you want a um, a pension forecast to know exactly how much you're on track to um, to get there is a form the name of which is escaping at me at the moment but you can just send a, a form in and you can get a, a pension forecast uh, fairly uh, easily so that's that's the best way to do it. It, it there's so many different variations and people falling between different gaps and you know different ages that's the easiest way to find out and somebody mentioned one of our callers earlier on that they hadn't taken their state pension even though i think uh, they were well beyond the the age is there an advantage in in deferring it yeah, there is. Um, it used to be that if you deferred it, you had the choice of taking a lump sum uh, or a, uh, a an enhanced income. Nowadays, uh, that's not the case. So if you take a uh, if you defer your pension, uh, you can just get an increased income, and that increased income is uh, it's about it's, well, let me just remind myself, but it's it's one percent for every five weeks you defer. Uh, and so this works out to be 10.4% for every 52 weeks you defer. So if you don't need it, uh, then deferring deferring the pension is worthwhile because it allows you to have a, a higher income. Of course, the downside is uh, if you don't live for a long time, you won't you live long enough to get 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 it. Um, but it, it's it's often worth doing, particularly if you're still working, and uh, because it. it um, that way you can kind of get more money out after you finish working and therefore pay less tax on you know, on your other income, usually. Great advice. Charlie, really appreciate it. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. That's Charlie Redding there from Efficient Portfolio and author of Look Out for His New Book, uh, Entrepreneurial Happiness.